Hello there. So that last episode of The Sopranos was an absolute banger, in my opinion. In my opinion. Lots of drama, lots of drama to digest, but yeah, it was absolutely fantastic, and I'm having a blast with this show. I've said it time and time again, this show is absolutely sensational, it's phenomenal. There's no words, I'm running out of words in the dictionary to describe this show, man. What's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film student for Sydney, Australia, and today we are up to episode 3 of The Sopranos Season 4. This one is titled Christopher. We're going to get into the reaction, we're going to have some fun with this thing, we're going to absolutely smash it. Let's go. Let's go, baby. I took off the sports headband for this reaction, even though I just used it for the previous one. I don't know how well it's going to be received. I thought I looked gangster in it, okay? But I just, yeah, I don't want it for this one. I don't know why. I'm just like, yeah, we'll see how it's received. We'll see. <laughs> Anti-Italian discrimination. Columbus Day, the day of Italian pride. It's our holiday, and they want to take it away. It's always going to come back to the Italians. But I never liked Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are not so happy for Columbus, because he was from Genova. What's the problem with Genova? The north of Italy always have the money and the power. They punish the south since hundreds of years. Even today, they put up their nose at us like we're peasants. <laughs> I hate the north. Jesus, take it easy. I'm going to take action here. Furio talking like it's Game of Thrones in this, man. I hate the north. <laughs> <laughs> you should come, Adriana. All the women are here at the gym. <laughs> Noon in the bingo room at St. Peter and Paul's. They have a series of ladies' luncheons every week. The food is good. Oh. Oh. just bought himself a little house in Nutley. He is so gorgeous. I'm surprised nobody snapped him up Waiting yet. I think he should lose ponytail. You do? So, I'm, I'm uh, you know... There's a little bit of ambiguity, like I said at the end of last episode, surrounding aid. What happened in that interrogation room? We don't know still. Obviously ended with the vomit, but what was her final decision? She's clearly not in prison, so maybe she handed a little bit of information. I think it looks great on him. How much money did you make today, slut? She... Oh my gosh. That's all, bitch? I'm gonna put you back on the street, ho. Is she pegging him? First the gun to the head now this. Mama's a little hoo uh pimp you out, bitch. Yeah. We gotta get that. Bam 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 bam. He's got the rocky theme on his beeper. Oh no no. Hi Rolf, how are you? What? I, I can't hear you too good. Obviously, as well, um, does Aid not know about her one phone call? Like, could she have just said, you know, I want my phone call first before speaking? Could she have done that? I could be wrong, but like... It must be your cell phone. You in the car? Oh, no, no. I'm coming home. Yeah. No, chick, it's great. Um, the no. vibrator, really? Yeah, I'd like to make a collect call. Area code 917. Johnny Sack. Collect call for Mr. Walters. Listen, John, I just want to say, uh, I hope your feelings weren't hurt too bad and that it never got back to the missus. What the fuck are you talking about? You didn't hear the joke about Ginny? Oh. Never mind. Let it die at that. What joke? John. You're better off not hearing it. Trust me. He planted well, that man, seed. He planted that me, seed. Paulie. John, you got more laborers on the job. Paulie turning into Livia here. <laughs> then we got carpenters. What's the problem? The problem is the carpenters are carrying sheetrock and materials. So we ain't getting what we expected to be getting. Minimally expected. That Mazarone hired more laborers off the books. Nobody's talking to you. All right, Jesus. Because he said the joke, yeah? Was it him? 6535. Salud. 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 Johnny, you explain the other thing I want to talk about. Sure. Tony, it's come to our attention you bought property around Freeling Heisen Avenue and turned it in a week. So? You did it with inside knowledge from Ron Zellman. Come to your attention from where? That property's hot because of the Esplanade. We share the Esplanade. We share Zellman. 
The Soprano family's gonna benefit from it, then Carmine feels we should have, too. Okay, we'll work something out. Tell him over. I've been your doctor for 30 years. You still hate the thermometer. Okay. Tony, Furio's here. Thank you for bringing those food, Lee. I love those. Furio, Furio used to just wait outside the house. Now he's entering the house. Furio, please. I like you. Do not go there. Carmela, do not insinuate it. You already have, but don't. I got pictures of my new house. Oh, let me see. <laughs> We're here today with our guest, Dr. Del Ray Clay, who is a professor of anthropology at Rutgers University and Steel Institute. These are pretty broad charges. All I know is Italian Americans are extremely proud of Christopher Columbus, Admiral of the Ocean Seas and the Great Italian. You know very well of the compromise position we put forth. Now, if you people want to make it an Italian pride parade, we have no problem with that. I just want to ask you guys, like, obviously the comment section is going to be, it's going to be very, 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 they're going to know their shit, all right? I just want to ask about Christopher Columbus. I don't know too much about U.S. history, but I know sort of like, the, 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 I think the most I know about Christopher Columbus is literally Night at the Museum, but I don't know how, how factual that is. Um, I, I think, he, is he the one that discovered America, but it's like, he wasn't the first to, like, it, it's just... His character itself, like he, his character himself is like shrouded in controversy and things like that. I don't know too much about it. I could research it after this episode for sure. But I'm guessing the comments always put it perfectly. That's what I'm going to say. History does say Columbus discovered America. The there we go. America that put your people in bondage for three centuries. But every culture has had to bear the pain in the making of what I think we can all agree is a startling economic miracle. We cured polio. I have to agree with Bill. The right... Enough. You okay, Tony? You look a little moosha moosh. Uncle Jim's trial starts today. Oh. First soprano family trial in 16 years. We should go. The guy's gonna be at the other place. Thank you for the cookies. And congratulations on that house. Oh, and I like the kitchen. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is gonna be so interesting this trial next case on the calendar united states of america versus corrado john soprano et al any applications before i bring in the jury no your, no, your honor. honor bring the jury telephone charges on your last bill cost me 40 bucks every time you pick up the phone I can't. Who was the witness? Are they going to tamper with the jury? $2,380 last month alone. I'm going to give you some preliminary instructions and explain the process by which we will try this case. The first order of business. Looking out at the oh. proud, strong, beautiful women. Our grandmothers may have been dressed in black, but where in Moschino and Armani. <laughs> <laughs> For those who say Italian Americans eat smelly cheese and sip cold wine, tell them we're from the land of aromatic Asiago and supple Barolo. A Princeton study showed that 74% of Americans associated Italian Americans with organized crime. Damn. Why would they do this? <laughs> because of the way the media depict us. Again, it is our job to make sure Ooh. people know the other side of Italian American culture, the educated, wage earning, law abiding side. That's 26%. Because it is that who we truly are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just go with that. Karen not clapping, Carmela not clapping, Ro not clapping. Thank you, Professor Murphy, or should I call you Professor Longo Murphy? Longo, you don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> Small point. Didn't I read about a more recent study at Fairleigh Dickinson that found the opposite was true? That the great majority of Americans recognize these are fictional portrayals. We're still looking at the sample selection criteria used in that. Study. Yeah, what data was, well, what sample was? An excellent talk. 
Was the sample taken from the Bada Bing? Because that's a high sample rate. Uh, don't miss Professor Murphy's new book, Strega, the Sorceress as Imago Figure in Italian Literature. And stick around for coffee and dessert, courtesy of Capuzzo's Pastry Shop. <laughs> Well, I'll say it. That was totally uncalled for. Father and told us forget who his friends are. It was outrageous, Carm. I'm shocked. What are you gonna do? Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Really, though, how dare he? After all you've done for this parish. What are you gonna do? Are they trying her to? Are they oh, trying to get her to react? <laughs> are they trying to get her to react, and she's just like staying composed? I cut my ties with Father and Tertola. Yeah, buongiorno, venica. Father, I don't know what to say. I'm so upset. Why? What's wrong? What's wrong? Carmela is one of your biggest supporters and friends. How dare you let her suffer humiliation and embarrassment at the hands of an outsider? I don't know what you mean. Oh, you know exactly what I mean. Unfortunately, because of her husband's high profile in the waste industry, Carmela is the one who bears the brunt of these insults. But there were many of us who were equally offended. I am sorry. This is an open forum. You did hear me bring up that new study. Well, if that's your idea of a good luncheon speaker, I suggest you think about who really keeps this parish alive year after year. Damn. He came in and laid down the law. Take it down. He's going to burn the way our ancestors did. Go sit down, cupcake. We're not taking anything. Oh, this is going to turn ugly. This is going to turn ugly. Joey. They get a permit, Joe. Everybody, come on, let's go. Everybody, I remember this, Joey. I remember this, Joey. Come on, come on, you too. Yep. There's, I think that's Georgie from. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. Oh. Interesting episode so far. Very interesting. Artie running, locking himself in the car. Hello. It's me, Dad. What's up, Bobby? I'm trying to call you. <laughs> she wants you to pick up some steaks in the eggplants before you come home. <laughs> she can't do it? I'm stuck in traffic. Now I gotta go to the store. She had to go get some crowns or something. Your mother's a real pain that you know what sometimes. <laughs> when she gets home, tell her I said thanks a lot. Bobby Jr. <laughs> well, if you can't find a recipe, I'll ask the you. Oh, it's around here somewhere. Oh. Hello? Hi, Gab. What? When? Wait. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, God, that's terrible. Oh, yeah. Okay. What happened? Karen had an accident on Pompton Avenue. She's dead. Wait, Karen? No way. Karen? Bobby's wife? Is that the accident in front of Bobby? In the traffic? Oh man, the last word Bobby told Bobby Jr. That's crazy, his son's name is Bobby too. <laughs> the last words Bobby told Bobby Jr. was tell your mom thank you. Thanks a lot, was it? Oh man. Just like that? Great kid. What's happened to this doctor right now? Oriental ran right into him. What's Bobby gonna do? You do it, that woman. What the fuck are you doing getting pinched for public disturbance when his family's on trial? I'm sorry, Tony. Yeah, you, you went down there too. No. It was my idea. What the fuck? We got little Paulie in St. Barnabas. Plus, we lost face down there. This is something that hits home. I can't turn the other cheek on this. I know, but we're running a business here. How did Pat's... 
How did Patsy get out so quick? Because it's public disturbance. The fuck's with you? I cut on you to be the most level-headed guy I got. My father was a knight of Columbus. I'm Italian American, and I pay money. To be Goes way back. <laughs> Information Coordination Council ambassador. We're the victims here. Oh, you write a check too. So let's not forget. It was a friend of ours, Joe Colombo, who founded the first Italian American anti defamation organization. It was still out of line. You're right. 100%. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> well, he had your consigliere. Since you ask, I think the guys, and myself too, we need your leadership on this. All right. All right, good. I understand you want to do something, but use your brain. Believe me. Me and Ralphie are working on a few things. This battle's gonna be won on the PR level. Hearts and minds. <laughs> they manipulate your image, Columbus. You manipulate theirs. All right. Oh, that's another funeral to attend, Karen. Well, we need somebody to make it go away. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Real hot potato. Nobody wants to touch it. Why, we just want a peaceful parade like we've had for years with no interference. What's wrong with that? It's the First Amendment and it's Native Americans. Very sensitive stuff. <laughs> My hands are tied on this one. Sorry. Yeah, fine. I will be attending the parade as always. You got my support there. I wish that I could... <laughs> Hey, you can't get everything to go your way. The last time that you dated a friend and colleague of your brother's, he left you flat, disappeared into the witness protection program. I know. Thank you. Oh, another man who works with your brother, unable to meet your basic needs for love and respect. Hell with him. I know. The work is to make new choices that have nothing to do with old patterns. I wanted Sandy. I, 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 I do. God give me the strength. She will. Wait, Your what? Interview conflicts with what? Ugh. Which shrink is she seeing? Guy in New Jersey. <laughs> Del Red Clear, right? Mm -hmm. She replied, "She will." Like yeah, it's Lil Wayne and Drake. No, don't get up. I'm Henry Caruso. I'm pleased to meet you. Now this lovely lady. Maggie Donner, I'm Dell's TA. Yes, yes, I can see that. How awkward do you want to be in public? Well, I might as well get to the point. <laughs> you remember this guy? Ernest Cody, he was an actor in the movies. Son of Pale Face, Sitting Bull. Your bucking poster boy. Part Cherokee, part Cree. He wasn't even a fucking Indian. Second generation Sicilian from Louisiana named Miss Spira Dakota. Well, I think you better leave now. Guy's a total fucking phony. Total fugazi. Even Jay Silverheels knew it. But he kept it quiet. Well, we're not gonna. You keep up your bullshit. We're gonna go wide with this thing. There's the PR thing oh, Sylvia was talking about. Man, just leaving the picture there for Jesus insult as well. Christ, is this true? This is a fucking disaster. <laughs> Chill out. You didn't know about this? It's been on Access Hollywood, E. This is a major PR boner. There we go. It's been researched. Cody was definitely Native American, total environmentalist. Are you sure about this? Look, Del, I'm one ace Italian myself. You are? You never told me that. My great, great something or other was a pony soldier. Well, actually, he was a violinist. One eighth seven. Italian? <laughs> we did the ancestry test like that? Damn. That is just one person's opinion, Anthony. Well, football again? People's history of the United States. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> discussion about Christopher Columbus. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them. Subjugate? And make them do whatever we want. That doesn't sound like a slave trader to you? George Washington had slaves, the father of our country. Well, what's your point? His history teacher, Mr. Cushman, is teaching your son that if Columbus was alive today, he would go on trial for crimes against humanity like Milosevic and, you know, Europe. 
Your teacher said this. Oh, it's no. not just my teacher. It's the truth. It's in my history book. So you finally read a book and it's bullshit. Tell me. <laughs> Look, you had to work in Columbus's shoes to see what he went through. People thought the world was flat for crying out loud. Then he lands on an island with a bunch of naked savages on it. I mean, that took a lot of guts. You remember when we went to Florida, the heat, and those bugs? No, well, like it took guts to murder people and put them in chains. He was a victim of his time. Uh, who cares? It's what he did. He discovered America is what he did. He was a brave Italian explorer. And in this house, Christopher Columbus is a hero. End of story. It's the cult. It's the culture wars. Oh, Bobby, man. Why Bobby? Why Bobby? <laughs> How many of these open caskets are we gonna see in this show? I should have known. I should have known you needed me. I should have been with you. I should have been in your place. <laughs> my love. My sweet love. <laughs> Lord, the disrespect. This is what Meadow was talking about last episode at Jackie's funeral. He's on the phone. He was talking with somebody about how Bobby was the only one of them who doesn't have a colada. They were laughing at him. Who was he talking to on the phone? Bobby a real one, man. Bring my eggplant palm over to Bobby's. Actually, tomorrow is better for me. There he is, John. Look, I'm sorry I missed the Legless National School graduation. Unforgivable. But I made it up to him. Stick it in your ass. Hey, can I talk to you? What the fuck, John? Keep him away from me. John, what's going on? I don't want to talk about it. What's this? I have no fucking idea. But I got better shit to do. Damn, Johnny Sack and Ralphie. About the joke. You saw how I was with them at dinner the other night. Something's going on. Poorly, man. Poorly talking. I said, I don't know where Carmen's up my ass on this Freeland Heights and Avenue bullshit. Somebody's talking too much. It's costing me money. That's the one in the can. Come on. There's no release. I'm surrounded by death. My husband, my son, my friend. Poor Ro, man. I don't know what to tell you, Ro. There's pieces torn out of me. Chunks of me that are dead. And look at me. My youth, my looks, they're gone. No. That's from not taking care of yourself. Dwelling on all this stuff. It's not stuff. Do you have any idea what it feels like? No, because I feel like he doesn't Do feel you? this guy. It's not stuff. It's death. It's pain. This guy doesn't feel. He has no remorse. No nothing. Trouble dealing with this. I don't know. You don't know what. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can help you. I need a lot right now. I don't think there's anything I can do. You can be there for me. You can comfort me. What about me? What do I get out of it? I'm, I'll be surprised if Ro doesn't... What do you get? Like Ro... How about your every need taken care of? Sexually everything. All your shit. It's all about you, isn't it? It's not all about me, but, I mean, let's be realistic. Let's be realistic? What, you want to leave me? Then get the fuck out. It doesn't have to be like this. How should it be, huh? How the fuck should it be? Somehow, come on, find out we were flipping properties on Freeland Eyes and Avenue. So Feels so bad for Roman. Oh, that's a strong woman to deal with everything she's dealt with, and this guy treats her like shit. She could potentially become suicidal like this. Like the, the one person who 
she thought had an ounce of caring for her is just going to pick up and her, her having a lone house like that is not going to be good. a little less than we talked about. He makes an issue at a Zillman? <laughs> What's this one called, Hesh? This is pie of mine. Just what I made at last month. A lot of speed. I'm buying. Cool, man. You're beautiful, huh? That's right. Don't you know somebody over there at the Deer Park Casino in Connecticut? Run by the Mohonk tribe. Yeah, Marty, my niece's husband. This Columbus Day protest, so we need somebody to make her go away. What's wrong with freedom of speech? Yeah? She didn't have my kids talking about Columbus. She calls them a deep <laughs> murder. Well, they wiped out almost all of my people. Cubans are from Spain. Strictly speaking, they were Taino Indians who got raped by oh! the conquistadors. He's, he's in bad voice too, this guy. He's hilarious. I like it. <laughs> That's right, Reuben. Move on, got Martin Luther King Day. What do we got? I can't say I don't have any sympathy for the red man. Why is that? Jews, because of the history, have common cause with the oppressed. Some Indians were deliberately given blankets, tainted with smallpox, died like flies. No shit. Yeah, shit. Yeah. You want to talk bioterrorism? Look who started it. Amen to that, my friend. That's right. Christopher Columbus was no better than Adolf Hitler. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. Hitler? Yeah. I'm not the only one who thinks so. Yeah, that Indian uh, from the protest was whining about the wilderness. They had him on TV, and he called Columbus Hitler. So much, true, man. You're talking out of your ass. So much controversy this Columbus episode. Hitler. You're trivializing the Holocaust. Frankly, Reuben, you got that kind of covert anti-Semitism. I'd like you to leave my house. Anti-Semitism? That's right. Fuck you too, my man! Whoa, whoa! You guys, come on. Reuben, Hesh, you guys been friends for years. Tensions are rising this episode. <laughs> Opinions are being brought out that <laughs> were never expressed. I'll call Marty up in Connecticut. He knows a big mohawk. We're not tired. I didn't spill food because I'm tired. Bobby oh, Jr. Oh. Okay. Aww. To your Aunt Grace and Aunt Mary. Do what they say. It's great your family could come down. They're leaving tomorrow. Somebody's sick up there. Bobby just got promoted too as well. Like, he got to be stronger than ever now too, man. Oh, I feel so bad for Bobby. Should I get that? He takes all my pencils. He takes all my pencils. <laughs> Honestly, we got to stop answering phones in this show. Bacalieri residence. Carmela, is that you? Carrado. Oh, hello. That's my boy Bobby. He knows I couldn't make it to the services. He's all right. He's upstairs with the kids. What a heartbreak, huh? You know, I remember the first time I met her like it was yesterday. It was my birthday dinner at Roman Gardens. I'll never forget. She said I looked like Pablo Picasso. <laughs> I didn't even know what the hell Picasso looked like. But one day she showed me a picture of him. You know, she was right. That's very touching. Let me get Bobby for you. Aww. I just want to know if he's going to pick me up for court tomorrow morning or if I should call Murph. Maybe you should let Bobby be for a little while. Think about his needs instead of your own. It's not me. Please, don't villainize me here. Murph goes to bed early, so I wanted to call him now. I need him to drive me. I don't want to disturb him when he's asleep. He's an old man, for God's sake. Yeah, they, they need to sort out the issues between those two. Oh, that's Ralphie. Ah! What the fuck are you doing? We don't have to hide, baby. I did it. I told Ro. You told her about us? No. No, 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 no. I told her I didn't want to be with her anymore. And I left. <laughs> he on the Coca-Cola and the drugs, everything. Just sex. Yeah, yeah. You know what I want. And yeah, you want it all, don't you? No. Oh. Oh, yeah. Need me, oh, and she Maybe. fell right back into it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, tonight's my night. I gotta bring food over to Bobby Bacalas. Go on CD Patrol, too. Oh. Rose got thirsty. Well, what should I do? <laughs> the Goonie is solid, Tony. Next time you see Hesh, remind him. My granddaughter's bat mitzvah present. Doesn't really work. The bubble jet printer? I don't like to keep hocking him. Really? He knows about it. He said he lost the sales slip. So, Marty, where is this guy? There he is. 
What'd I say? Right. People like Red Clay, they're out of touch. They're in their ivory towers. They don't understand the economic opportunity that funds much of the Native American community. You should see the Olympic-sized swimming pool this man put in the Deer Park Reservation Rec Center. Well, we all got kids. We don't want to see our heritage attacked, that's all. <laughs> that easy. Oh. <laughs> Start a little shadow, hey. And my son called because Karen wanted me to pick up steaks and eggplants. And I was mad at her for sending me. I was tired. Bobby being worked around the clock, man. I was mad at her, but I was stuck in traffic because of her accident. She was up the road ahead of me, lying in twisted metal. But I didn't know, and I could have been with her. I should have been there to help her. That's crazy. His wife was like 50 was meters down her. from him. Not even. Oh, my sweet Karen. My sweet girl. Didn't have a guma, nothing as well. Pass me the peppers. It's nice meeting you, and I appreciate the effort. You got to let me make it up to you. Come on up, spend a day, sill whoever you want. High rollers room, everything comp. Not sure, that sounds good. Great. What can you say about Iron Eyes Cody? PR. I don't know it all fucked up. It don't mean nothing anyway, because it's like knowing uh, James Conn is in a day. The PR scheme ain't gonna work. We think this guy Red Clay's fucking a graduate student. We hire a detective. <laughs> I think it's over, Sil. <laughs> yeah, but you haven't got it. It's over. <laughs> Sil, you gotta hold this one, man. You just gotta let it go like Frozen, man. Let it go like Elsa. Why? And he had so much sadness. So much love for her. Such complete and pure emotion. I felt unworthy to be even be in his presence. <laughs> I was so moved by him. <laughs> and then I look at Ralphie. You saw in this man the things that you want in your life. Somehow I have to find a way to move away from the darkness and toward the light. Ask what does Yoda. This man do? He works with my brother, but he's not like the others. Janice. Uh, Sandy, he's different, believe me. Okay. You've got to sit him down and level with him. Speak the truth, Jan, but with the compassion and respect that you're famous for. And say goodbye for his sake as well as yours. Ooh! You're right. Oh, they actually went to the casino. I thought it, I thought they were going to take up that offer. It's all right. Had a great run, T. You held a base for quite a while. Potential business opportunity here. Whenever I'm in one of these places, I remember that my grandmother was part for Gawi. Maybe I should do something about it. Bullshit. No, no, it's true. She was. They were a nomadic tribe, and uh, they wander around, they get lost, and they go, where the Fagawi? <laughs> 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 See, so you gentlemen are having a good time. You're getting enough to eat? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm out of my comps here. Go find Marty. He's on the floor somewhere. <laughs> He'll hook you up. Talk a minute. Buy you a drink? Yeah, sure. See? Tony takes him up on his offer for a drink, unlike Ralphie. Tuition. Okay. A statement's up in my bedroom. Oh, that's okay. I trust you. Oh, wait. Is it five o'clock? The news. The protests. Uh, I'm here at Christopher Columbus Park in Newark, where this afternoon, violence broke out briefly between Native American demonstrators and members of a coalition of 18 various Italian-American pride organizations. Get out of here! This is our day! You hear that? Oh, there's a guy on the TV! My God, this is tragic. Oh, yeah, there's someone who holds, who has some Italian pride, Richard. Could be scored with Albinoni's Adagio. Different view. <laughs> Come on, is she gonna stand up for once against Ralphie or is she gonna. Oh, my guy moving in. You're gonna fall for the temptation again. Forgot. Sorry, honey. You forgot. So that's just it. You fucking forgot! Oh, fuck. Get out! Oh. 
Exercising her demons here. Yes, the Jordan Pill trick worked. Get out. I should have been there. I would have been fucking there. I forgot this was a Monday. Maybe we ought to just whack this prick. Who the fuck are you kidding? <laughs> All you thought about was blackjack. Why? You think this day in the country was free, don't you? Well, I wasn't. Fucking Chief Smith wants Frankie Valley to come up there and play a week. That's what this whole fucking junket was about. Frankie? Yeah, that's right. That's why he buttonholed me, goddammit. Bad blood with Frankie's manager, so the Chief wants me to call him directly. As payback for him reaching out to Red Clay. Well, you're gonna make the fucking call. Oh, I ain't seen Frankie for years. Tough shit! You're making a fucking call! Do this fucking parade already! There's always reason behind everything. Never just people... I don't just... know what you're so hot about. They discriminate against all Italians as a group when they disallow Columbus. Oh, will you fucking stop? Group. Group. Fuck happened to Gary Cooper. That's what I'd like to know. He died. <laughs> oh, you mean because he fought the Sioux and all those westerns? Oh, fuck that. Gary Cooper. Now, there was an American. A strong, silent type. He did what he had to do. He faced down the Miller gang when none of those other assholes in town would lift a finger to help him. And did he complain? Did he say, Oh, I come from this poor Texas Irish illiterate fucking background or whatever the fuck, so leave me the fuck out of it because my people got fucked over. T, not for nothing. But you're getting a little confused here. A, that was the movies. Uh, what the fuck difference is that make? <laughs> so long ago, we might as well have been a fucking movie. <laughs> Images, you said. The point is, Gary Cooper, the real Gary Cooper, or anybody named Cooper, never suffered like the Italians. They made a guy like him, they fucked everybody else. The Italians, the Polacks, the Blacks. I don't know, if, if he was a medagon around nowadays, he'd, he'd be a member of some victim's group. The fundamentalist Christians, the abused cowboys, the gays, whatever the fuck. <laughs> the gay guys. No! Are you listening to me? Christopher. Hey, people suffered. Did you? Except for maybe the feds? My grandparents got spit on because they were from Calabria. Let me ask you a question. All the good things you got in your life, did they come to you because you're Calabrese? I'll tell you the answer. The answer is no. You got a smart kid at Lackawanna College. You got a wife who's a piece of ass. At least she was when you married. <laughs> you own one of the most profitable, topless bars in North Jersey. Now, did you get all this shit because you're Italian? No, you got it because you're you, because you're smart, because you're whatever the fuck. That's our true. Our self esteem. That shit doesn't come from, from Columbus or the Godfather or Chef fucking Boyardee. We got tiptoe around the Indians, though, don't we? We can't call our teams the Braves or the Tomahawks. Oh, you the... take it up with Frankie Valley when you talk. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm just gonna end it like that. That was a very interesting episode of The Sopranos. I mean, it's probably one of the ones I've been least invested in. Um, maybe because. Listen, I, I haven't brushed up on my American history in a while. Like, I'm, I'm not that fond of American history. Maybe you can ask me about ancient history, you know, Pompeii, Herculaneum, the Romans, Augustus, Julius Caesar, stuff like that. I'm all right with that. I um, need to refresh my memory on that, but um, that's what I learned in school. The American history, not too much. Um, but it was interesting episode to see everyone's reactions to this ordeal um, and tensions flaring up because everyone's opinionated or everyone's opinions differ from one another. So even heavy his lifelong friend like or like one of his friends he's known for years tempers flare because a little bit of politics gets involved
involved, a little bit of cultural history gets involved, and then a madness ensues. So yeah, it was a very interesting episode titled Christopher, um, obviously referring to Christopher Columbus. Um, we know these episode titles usually have more than one meaning, but with this one, um, Christopher himself was sidelined a lot this episode. Um, especially with aid um very few interactions with aid even at uh karen's funeral um i don't think he was there i don't think he was present um so yeah and interesting to see janice you know fighting her demons right there kicking ralphie down the stairs ralphie put him, being put in his place by janice let's go ralphie man um we saw maybe because he hurt his back it, like He's not going to touch Janice because of the Tony thing, obviously. I was thinking to myself, there could have been a little bit of a Tracy situation there, but possibly not. Like, even if he didn't hurt his back, um, he's not going to lay hands, or, or he's not stupid enough to lay hands on Tony Soprano's sister. Um, so, yeah. Oh, well, Richie did, and oh, we, we know how that ended up. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was an interesting episode of The Sopranos. Um, I still hope you enjoyed my reaction. I feel like... This one was amusing to watch. It was entertaining. Didn't forward the plot too much. Or like didn't... Didn't... Um, I don't know. I, I felt sorry for Bobby this episode. That was a big thing to happen this episode. But I felt like it was brushed aside a little bit. Like Bobby had his moment to shine. Um, he didn't... I feel like he didn't have his moment to shine. Like it, it just felt like it was there this episode. The placement of it felt kind of off amongst this whole Columbus Day thing. Like I don't know. I don't know. It just felt a bit off. Wasn't... I don't know, it might, this might be the weakest episode I've seen so far, in my opinion, in my honest opinion, listen, the acting is fantastic, the interactions are absolutely phenomenal, but the weakest episode in my opinion so far, I hope you guys still enjoy my reaction, as always, be your boy Moses, take care, God bless, peace.